Whoa, the colors. So we've got severed demon heads. I think that's a gargoyle and um, let's say a golem. Oh, and also zombies. You know it's a zombie because its arms are outstretched. In the very first room, I trade four crests for a red crystal, which will become my new weapon of choice. Let's try it out, shall we? All right, hits every monster on the screen, and the best part is that it can't miss. Apart from another magic ring and a weapon and armor upgrade, there isn't much of interest, so on to the next level. Oddly, it starts with a shaman walking off a cliff. There's quite an abundance of monsters in this level, like bears with red scarfs and... I don't even want to say what that looks like. But there are so many in this section that the game slows down and you get some really bad flicker. I wonder what would happen if I used the Sand of Cloud Time, which I found in the previous level, and which is supposed to slow them down. Yeah, it doesn't really fix anything. They're supposed to be easy to kill while they're slow, but I can't see the difference. Hey, didn't I see you on level 3? Yeah... Here you find the magic mirror. You're supposed to use it to view the area around you to see what's ahead. That would be good, except that monsters are not shown. You could also use it if you get lost and need to see the area quickly. That would also be good, except that it moves around at exactly the same speed that you walk. Not as convenient as you think. Okay, speed through to level 8. The colors are different. The music is awesome. And yes, that is half a zombie crawling around down there. But really, isn't this just like level 7? And level 6? And level 3? I mean, there's nothing particularly challenging about ladders, floors, and pillars. The challenge comes from finding your way through the level and exploring it systematically. In fact, at this point, it's the only challenge. By now, you should be strong enough to cut through these monsters like butter. Alternatively, you can pick up the Thunder Crystal, which is pretty cool, but leaves you wishing you had it earlier in the game. No wonder it only costs two crests. Ah, <sighs> next level. Okay, I can't imagine how anyone could still be enjoying this. It's the same thing. And there's always new monsters, but they only look different and are slightly harder to kill. Some walk, some fly, but they all move at the same speed and fall to the same swords and spells. Maybe if some were immune to fire or could shoot back at you, it might be interesting, but they never change. The only thing that keeps me going is my desire to finish the game and find more interesting items. Like this crystal eye, for instance. It confuses the monsters. Are they easier to kill? No, not really. You can even see that the designers are running out of ideas for level designs. Ooh, look! Steps! Finally, something does happen. First, you find the bronze idol. Then you come across this girl who may be the same as this one from the opening titles. She tells you that you need to rescue Gilgamesh, and gives you the location of the clay idol. Yep, it's in the crab. At this point, my head falls off. I have to go all the way back to level 1. I've played games that require you to backtrack, but they usually have waypoints, portals, teleporters, or other kinds of shortcuts. But not this game. There are one or two shortcuts, but it really is just walking back through endless corridors. Going forward through the game was easier, because unexplored areas always had monsters. But on the way back, there is nothing to guide you. No arrows, very few landmarks, everything really does look the same. And you will get lost many times. It's lonely, tedious, and soul-crushing. So finally, we reach the crab and destroy it with the magic glass that I found on level 8. So we now have the bronze and clay idols. But where is the iron idol? Honestly, I can't remember. I searched high and low, but I don't know where it is anymore. So I can't rescue Gilgamesh. But here's the thing, you don't have to. All you need to finish the game is the Underworld Seal spell, which can be found in Skyworld. And to get to Skyworld, you must travel to the highest point in the land and cast the spell of Skyworld. How cool is that? And how exciting. I wonder what Skyworld looks like. Oh no. No, 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 no. There aren't even any new monsters. So many rooms. And it just goes on and on and on. One thing's for sure, don't come up here unless you have a lot of keys. Look, I've actually run out here. Oh, lucky. Underworld Seal Spell, 15 crests. This better be worth my time. And as you can imagine, I now have to walk all the way back. But I'll spare you that experience. 
Here is the final level. It features the toughest monsters in the game, and it just goes in a straight line. It's not long before you reach... Praetorius. Not quite what you expected? Me either. I mean, is this Praetorius? Or the gate to the underworld? Or a statue? Or all three? Who knows? As you can see, there's no ordinary way to attack him. Even the Thunder Crystal just shoots horizontally. But luckily, you can throw donuts at him. He absolutely hates those. It's really not a very difficult battle. His projectiles are easy to dodge, and I only had to fill up my magic points once. Before you know, it's all over. Insert side one to see the ending. Like the intro, this is pretty amazing for a C64 game. The gate shatters. The monsters transform into dead versions of themselves. The tower collapses. And look at this, even Praetorius himself just explodes. And peace returns. Blah 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 Gilgamesh, blah blah best wishes. One of the most satisfying endings I've ever seen. And it's not any different if you rescue Gilgamesh. And that's all you need to know. The end.